Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you so much for being with me as we continue the theme we began at the beginning of the week, and that is the gift of a problem and how God uses problems not to defeat you, but to develop you. How God uses problems not for adversity, but for advancement. And we see this principle played out in two verses, Acts 1.8 and Acts 8.1. It's almost like the reverse, reverse. And God uses something to reverse something in our lives, to push us to where God wants us to be. Acts 1.8, we're told, Jesus tells his disciples, you shall receive power. After that, ye, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, we know that in chapter 2, guess what the church is? In Jerusalem. Chapter 3, in Jerusalem. Chapter 4, in Jerusalem. Chapter 5, Jerusalem. Chapter 6, Jerusalem. Chapter 7, Jerusalem. They've gone seven chapters, and they have not gotten to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, which was God's will. And that, that verse basically is, locates many of us. We're stuck in a place we know God does not will for our lives. We have not moved beyond uh, maybe emotionally or psychologically or vocationally or academically where God wants us to be. We're stuck in Jerusalem. And we, chapter after chapter, we're stuck. So God says, let me help unstuck you. And what does God do? Chapter 8, verse 1, it says this, and Saul approved of their killing of their killing him. That's referring to the martyrdom, the killing of Stephen. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered through Judea and Samaria. It was something bad that produced something good something that the devil thought was going to defeat them, develop them. It took some adversity to advance them to where God wanted them to be. It was the gift of a problem. And sometimes God, in God's toolbox, uses a problem to advance us beyond the Jerusalem or the stuck places in our lives. No, how does God use a problem? Let's, let's go just a little bit deeper and drill down just a little bit deeper on how God uses problems as a gift to get us to where God wants us to be. First of all, you, you consider this, and you can write it down so you won't forget it. God uses problems to light a fire under you. God uses problems to light a fire under you. What got them moving? It was a problem. What gets you moving sometimes? It's a problem. You don't get fired up sometimes until you say, you know what, enough is enough and too much is too much. I've got to get out of this situation. I've got to improve. I can't stand a, take another day in this type of depressing, defeating, demoralizing circumstance. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 30 says this. Listen to what the word of God says. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. It took a painful experience, namely persecution, to get the church to move from Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the world. So God uses a problem to light a fire under you. That's the gift of a problem. Secondly, God uses a problem to bring out the best in you. Sometimes you don't know how innovative and creative you are until you're in a situation in which you have to be innovative and creative. You don't know how self-reliant and God-reliant you can be until other people have let you down. And then that it brings out the best in you. You know, tea bags, tea bags don't get activated on the shelf in the box. Something's in the tea bag, but what has to happen for the what's in the tea bag to get activated? You know what has to happen. You gotta take that tea bag and you gotta put that tea bag in hot water. And by putting that tea bag in hot water, the tea bag gets activated and flavors the entire cup of water. And brothers and sisters, my friends, sometimes God has to do us like a tea bag. God's got to put us in some hot water in order to bring out the best in us.
So God uses his problems to light a fire under us. God uses his problems to bring up the best in us. Three, God uses problems to teach us lessons. To teach us lessons. You know, sometimes, uh, well, let's listen to what the word of God says. Psalm 119 verses 71 and 72 says this. My troubles turned out for the best. They forced me, stop here, to learn. They force me to learn. And that's what trouble does to us sometimes. It teaches us some valuable lessons that we never would have learned unless we'd had the trouble, the problem. Number four, listen to this. Number one, when God uses problems to light a fire under you. Two, God uses problems to bring out the best in you. Three, God uses problems to teach us lessons. And number four, God uses problems to prevent greater problems. What do you mean? Sometimes God will let you have a small problem to wake you up. I better stop because this can escalate into a bigger problem. I'm thinking about a particular person who was in a relationship and they discovered that it was a toxic relationship. And they had trusted this particular person and this particular person betrayed their trust. They were hurt. But suppose they had really gotten into a real deep relationship. If the relationship had grown and they had invested uh, confidential information with this person, then things could have gotten worse. So sometimes God allows us to have a smaller problem to shake us in order to prevent us from having a much larger problem. In other words, when somebody hurts you, it's it's in, and you say, why did they hurt me? Sometimes it's best that you find out who is what, who they really are. Early, before you've invested a lot, be, uh, to prevent you from investing too much, which can cause even greater problems. So God uses problems to prevent greater problems. And finally, God uses problems to build our character, our character, our character. And character is important. We focus on charisma, but God's concerned about our character. In fact, listen to me, God is more concerned about your character than your comfort. If God was in your was only concerned about your comfort, God wouldn't allow you to have a problem. God allows you to have a problem because while it may be uncomfortable, it helps build character and make you the man, the woman God wants us to be. In fact, uh, if you look back over your life and someone to ask you, what was it that helped make you the, to become the man or the woman you are today? I promise you, you can look back over your life and say, you know what? I didn't like it at the time, but it was a problem that helped mature me and helped to grow me. Because God doesn't use problems to defeat you. God uses problems to develop you. And the adversity is for the advancement. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God in the process. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and bless your people to take these principles and truly believe that this problem is not to defeat us, but my problem is to develop me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. Look, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. And I like to extend an invitation to you to become a digital disciple here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Uh, contact us here at newstart at ssclife.org. I also like to remind you that I have written a book. You can go to my official webpage, uh, drkevinwcosby.com, and you can pick up the new book I just released about a month ago called Getting to the Promised Land. And I have other resources and other books uh, that you can uh, purchase and secure. And I think there'll be a tremendous blessing to you. So go to my webpage and check that out. So thank you so much for being with me today. Look, we have Bible study tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Bible study tonight. Uh, worship begins, well, pre-worship begins at 6.30, and then the actual worship service begins at 7 
o'clock tonight. Dr. Alan Evans, my good friend, will be here because it's my birthday. Yes, I've gotten a little bit older. Birthday. So I hope you'll join me for Whiteout Wednesday tonight. Uh, wear your white, take pictures, and post yourself. Even if you, you, you can't be with us, wear your white at home, and, and let's worship God together online. I'll see you tonight, but until then, look, remember during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, well, don't forget, God is in control. Love you much. See you tonight. Take care.